I want to welcome Chris Bond. He, uh, he just is releasing a uh, really awesome PDF called uh, Gas Holes. Um, in fact, Chris, if you want to throw the link in the chat, in, it's a Gumroad uh, book. If you want to throw the link in the chat, please do. And um, do you see how to do that, Chris? I'll have to snag it. I don't have it on my clipboard right. yet. You do it a little bit. But uh, Chris is doing a lot of travelage and uh, travels a ton. So I was really excited to talk to him because some of the strategies he has, I actually went through the book earlier. Um, they're very easy to do. Um, you know, I always say, you know, getting discounted, dis, um, discounted gift cards is a real easy strategy to save on OA. This is almost as easy, if not easier to do. Um, so I wanted to share this because it could uh, really lead you to not really ever have to buy gas again. Yeah, and if you do end up paying for gas, I mean, I've, I pay as low as uh, less than a penny a gallon at some stations. Uh, yeah. Some stations are two cents a gallon. Some stations are uh, just under 11 cents a gallon. So it depends on where you go. But at 11 cents a gallon, you can get 20 gallons of gas in most places. And uh, you're spending less than uh, two and a half dollars to get 20 gallons. Wow. So it, it's pretty cheap and pretty phenomenal. I'm going to let you grab the link because you, I sent you a link a little bit ago and I, I don't have access to that one. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself while I grab that? Sure. So for those of you that uh, are not familiar with me, I've been around uh, the Amazon and online sales community for a number of years. I started selling on eBay in two uh, from there, I've migrated into a book business. I sold uh, books online for well over a decade. And where I'm at, it's, it's a real small community. And in order to find product, I would go to different towns, which would lead to, if, it, if I go out to another town, I might as well stay out for a day, two or three. So I go to book sales and uh, stay out for three, four, five days. I'd blend camping in with that. I'd go see friends in different towns and uh, just as much as I possibly could utilize while anything while I was out. Uh, in 2011, I came across Chris Green and Retail Arbitrage and it just blended right in with what I was doing. Uh, instead of hitting garage sales and thrift stores and uh, bookstores and libraries and such, I was able to go right into uh, air conditioned environments. I mean, middle of summer, it's a hundred degrees out. I don't want to be out at a garage sale as much as I love them. It's hot. I don't want to sweat all day. So I started going into the stores, nice air conditioning, finding RA deals where you clear an end cap off and there's a few hundred dollars worth of profit and, uh, blending in with the RA. Uh, I just, got in with uh, loyalty programs. And if you guys aren't working loyalty programs, it's the first thing you need to go change. You go sign up for uh, rewards programs at Walgreens, you know, get your red card at Target, uh, do as, whatever you can. And not only sign up for the loyalty programs, but work them, understand what the terms of service are, understand how flexible they are. Yeah. Are you still doing, um, are you still doing as much with the Sears loyalty programs? No, not so much. So uh, I'm a personal shopper for Kmart and Sears. Uh, it's like having an uh, independent sales associate. And I came across this. I explained it in the book as well. But I, I came across this from loyalty programs, uh, chasing deals and such. I see that Shop Your Way, Kmart and Sears has a program to teach other people the program. So mm -hmm. I started, uh, I think three years ago, I started uh, with the Shop Your Way program, uh, teaching people how to work the program. And I still am active in it. They've changed a lot of the terms of service on my end. Uh, they don't allow uh, as much earnings as I used to do. They've closed yeah, down they, countless. They did a lot of cut, a uh, big cut. Yeah, and they've cut. They've closed down all my stores in my immediate region. I mean, I have to go to Omaha to go to the closest uh, I Kmart. See, I'm rolling my eyes. Kmart and Sears, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, and I've, I've done great with them over the years. I mean, you could go into Kmart and they might have 50 or 60% off all their clearance toys. Well, if you work the programs like what I explain in the book, then you're going to walk out of there with those toys at a much deeper discount along yeah. with 
multiple rewards on top of it. Well, I think it's so important when you consider like an example um, with a gas rewards program, if you're getting, so like Giant Eagle is the one that's closest to me that you mentioned in the book. Um, you can get, usually you get 3%, but you can get 6%. You know, if you're able to get, you know, gift cards and stuff like that and get an extra 6% where, you know, Ebates is at 1% or 2%. I'm sorry, Ebates, not Ebates. Um, raise. Yeah. So if you're able to stack like, you know, you know, 3%, 6%, 1% a, a or 2% credit card cash back, next thing you're at, you're at 10%. Yeah. Off. And, and it starts that's... becoming significant. Yes, it does, very quickly. Um, you know, and, and what I really want to applaud you is less about the book. I mean, the book's great and everything, but I really love, Chris, the design that you've done with your lifestyle design. That, you know, like I've talked to you, you go to festivals, you go to concerts, you take your family with you. That's so admirable. And it's just really uh, amazing that you're able to do that. And I feel, you know, from talking to you that a large part of that probably has to do with this because gas, you know, you're driving a truck, you have a trailer, right? Here, yep. Yeah. I mean, man, gas, gas has to kill you. Except it should, huh? <laughs> normally, yeah. I mean, Tyler and I spent... Man, we probably spent 300 bucks getting gas from uh, Kansas City up to uh, Wisconsin. Sure. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, when you're out there and it's pulling a trailer, I, I get right around 10 miles to the gallon. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Oregon and back in June and July, spent 18 days out on the road. I think we did 4,000 miles on that trip. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's gas becomes a... Uh, something that you really need to consider when you're taking a trip. I mean, it does, yeah. what do you guys spend on gas driving around town every day, once a week, once a month? I mean, what's your monthly gas bill? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you asking me? What my monthly gas bill? I'm just asking everybody. It's a rhetorical yeah. question. Yeah, and the thing is, is like as as you get larger, as you get larger in scale. You know, I I was just talking to Cody, and I wanted to make sure he got he saw this because. He does traveling. He's down south, and he goes up north a little bit where it's a little bit more rural. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, if you have a little Mazda, I got my Passat. My Passat gets like 25 miles a gallon. His Mazda probably gets way better than that. But if you're driving a cargo van, a pickup truck, an SUV, a minivan, out the door right there. And, you know, there's not much you can do about it. But when you're going to start really getting shopping done, you're going to at the least need a minivan. You know, an SUV is probably also good. You know, and as soon as you start doing that and you're like, oh, I'm going to drive 250 miles, if you're getting 15 miles a gallon, it really adds up real fast. Yep. And when you're out there, for, I mean, I do travel tage. When I'm out there for weeks on end, the fuel expense, can, I mean, if I wasn't doing what I was doing with gas rewards, then I, I mean, I wouldn't go out as far. I wouldn't stay out as long. I wouldn't go see as many people. I mean, it just wouldn't be as much of an option. I mean, last year, my trip to uh, Ecom Chicago, which is, I think I put 1,400 miles on that trip. I spent less than a dollar in gas on that trip. Okay. You can stop bragging now, Chris. You're, you're getting me a little jealous here. But you were talking to me. I, I was asking about ASD. If you drove, you drive out to ASD, right? I haven't. No. No, but you fly. Okay. Do you? So yeah. And I mean, it's just what amazes me, Chris, is I think that when people get really good at something, you know, fundamentally, I think too many people are in this business to make money. And we should all obviously be in this business to make money. This isn't a charity. We are here to make money. But beyond that, there's another question of the design of lifestyle. And I really feel like you have mastered this little piece of it. You, you know, you, you're, you're good at everything with it, but you've really just mastered this one little piece. And this one little piece is something that, um, you know, is just so many people like could benefit from, and you've just mastered to allow you to go to that next step. When you're doing like an 18 day trip, if you don't mind me asking, how much are you typically spending? Uh, on RA stuff? Yeah. I mean, it's all going to vary. It's, it all changes with if, if I'm carrying a trailer season to season. Uh, I mean, if I go out with 
just my minivan, for example, I try to ship every day or three, depending on how much uh, product I get, how much processing needs to be done. If I'm pulling my trailer, I'm still trying to ship every day or two. But on good days, I mean, I'm filling the trailer up. It's a 10-foot cargo trailer. I mean, in about two days' time, I'll be filling it up pretty regularly, like yeah. during the right seasons, when the right sales are happening, when the right end caps are full. And as far as how much money I'm spending on each like given day, given trip, I, I mean, sometimes ten, twenty thousand dollars. I mean, sometimes I go out for a handful of days and I can only squeeze a thousand or two thousand dollars in. I mean, it all varies, but I mean, if I come across the right deal, I'm usually able to pull the trigger on it and yeah. uh, have the van or the the cargo trailer to squeeze it in. Like I saw you guys had to stop and rent a trailer the other day and yeah uh, that, and it's good you guys have the ball hitch for that that was an option for you guys to be able to do well so my trip my my usual sourcing vehicle i have my my station wagon which is like my around town car um but usually i drive an e250 cargo van so like that i wouldn't have needed to get a trailer i could have held everything that tyler had in just my cargo van sure you know so that's good. Actually, Cody says, uh, shit, the only thing that's get it, keeping me from getting a Class C RV was fuel costs more than running an SUV in hotels. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you, get, uh, you do this uh, living out of an RV or school bus or something along those lines. Uh, I mean, you, you cut out your hotel expenses on top of this. I mean, I, I, I couch surf all the time. I have, I have friends all over the country. I have family all through the Midwest region. And so I'm able to stop at people's places and there's nothing to stop me from just pulling all my inventory out right in your driveway, knocking an order out in a few hours, putting it all back in my vehicle and taking it up to the house. Yeah. Do you, um, and I mean, have you, have you crowd surfed or uh, couch surfed at uh, FBA sellers houses? A uh, couple. Yeah. I mean, um, Brian's, uh, Brian Smith's house. If you ever get a chance to sleep there, highly recommend it. Sure. <laughs> I've had lunch with Brian in, in Kansas City. Yeah, he's a real nice guy. Uh, but, um, I mean, yeah, I have, and it's funny you say that. Like, I have a friend that lives right outside of Chicago. She, I met her playing Counter-Strike. So, whenever I go up to, like, Tyler's place, like, you know, I can crash there. Um, you know, and it's like 12 hours from me, 10, 11 hours or so, and then proceed up to Wisconsin. And, I mean, having that network is just really phenomenal. It is. And you know what? It, it just gives you the option. I mean, a hotel, you know, a hotel is $100 average. Uh, and typically, I'm just going to be there from mid evening, late evening until first thing in the morning, I'm going to get up and go at it again. Mm -hmm. well, if I'm going to do something like that, I'd rather go hang out at your place, talk shop all night, have a beer and, and then get up in the morning and go do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, that's, that's like fundamentally, the thing about this, like that goes beyond, okay, you know, you have a business, you're successful at business, you make good money. Yeah. Yeah. All that's great. But then there's this, Oh, Andy gets to travel the country and one of the largest expenses of that he's figured out how to take care of. I mean, that's just amazing. Yes. Yeah, so we homeschool. I have four children and we homeschool. And uh, one of my uh, dreams to be able to do with the family is to take them out on a four to six week journey all across the country and we'll process inventory when we're driving down the interstate mm -hmm. that's that's one of my goals that we'll be doing here in the next few years and the kids will be able to be homeschooled and see the country at the same time oh that's amazing how old are your kids uh 16 almost 15 11 and 8 okay isn't uh just one of the wyatts he does that right I don't uh, Jason Wyatt, yeah. Jason Wyatt, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just so cool. That That's that's amazing to me. Um, have you, like, doing this, have you been to all, well, all 48 lower states? No, uh, I, this summer I made it to Washington and North Dakota for the first times. Okay. And that leaves uh, Michigan and Minnesota in the lower 48. And I'm not missing anything. You just crossed yeah. those right off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might click both those off on my trip to Chicago this year. Okay. Yeah, M M Minneapolis or uh, Minnesota is not bad. I've, I've been to Michigan just very briefly. But, uh, but yeah, that's really awesome. And um, 
you know, I've done this to myself a little bit. I mean, I recently, I went up to, this was a few months ago, I went up to Scan Power uh, with Tyler and I mean, you know, drove the big cargo van and didn't really cost me much of anything. You know, tolls, which I ended up, that ended up being a fiasco of, New York is just the worst with paying tolls. God, I was pulling my trailer going to Chicago a couple of years ago, and I got I kept getting clicked with like a thirteen or a seventeen dollar charge, like every thirty miles they they were hitting me for this, and it was it was all because I had an extra axle. While I was pulling a pulling the trailer, and uh, so after the third one, I got off the interstate and took state highways the rest of the way into Chicago. Yeah, it was getting ridiculous. Oh man, that's rough. So if, if, um, was there anything particular like you wanted to talk about if, if like somebody obviously, so I shared your Facebook group, which there's not just the talk about the fuel points, but there's just general talk about rewards and discounts. And, uh, you know, I actually pulled you last year for my Q4 group and you did really awesome with Sears. What, what's your favorite loyalty program right now? I mean, it's probably still shop your way. Uh, I mean, Given the, the benefits when, when I take advantage of them, uh, the, the ability to stack the promotions, coupons, gift cards, uh, it it's still seems better than a lot of other opportunities around me. I mean, Kohl's, Kohl's has a really good program. I've seen people with thousands of dollars worth of Walgreens credits. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I can't show it to you without showing the number accidentally. Go ahead and show me the number. I'll show you the number, absolutely. I got a $220 Kohl's cash the other day, so sure. that was good. That, that's nothing, though. I mean, you can get a few grand easily. For but sure, yeah. What, and, uh, yeah? Oh, I was just, just going to say, uh, it's these loyalty programs, you know, it, it's not just about gas. It's... It, Use them all, combine them, stack them as many times as you can, you can do this. And the volume of discounts, rewards, points, they, they all just stack up and they all, I mean, if you're getting $2 off here, but you're also earning some cash back that's gonna come in later, that cash back's gonna sit there and bank and you're gonna get your Ebates check once a quarter. Does Giant Eagle do Walgreens? Can you get a Walgreens gift certificate there? gift card i'm not familiar uh we don't have giant eagle out here okay let, let's if you don't mind let's do some math here because i think maybe people don't quite get how awesome this is so what's the typical cash back on giant eagle it's three percent right uh how many points you're going to earn for your gas is yeah. that what you're asking okay let, let me give you an example i have a replant out of wall out of walgreens i pay 940 dollars for it, for, for uh, cases of it. So I, pl I buy that once a month. So if I have, nine, let's call it $1,000, okay? If I go and buy $1,000 in gift cards, I would get how many cash reward, how much in cash back at Giant Eagle? So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd ha I'm gonna have to pull up Giant Eagle real quick just to verify that. Um, well, why don't you do it at your store? Like, you were gonna buy it. So I'm gonna get 4% back in gas. You get 4% back. Yeah, and so then I'm going to use a discounted, uh, or I'm going to use a cashback credit card to earn an additional 2% on it. Okay, so you're at 6% now. Right. Now, if I'm going to do an online purchase and go through Ebates, I mean, we'll say 3%, 5%. My, my particular replens in-store only, so but my manager's awesome and gives me 5x Walgreens points Okay. on any purchase. Yep. So what's the wall? Those come out to one percent. So that's an additional five percent, right? Right. Okay. So eleven percent there. Eleven percent. Yep. And I haven't really done anything. Nope. You just stopped off and grabbed some gift cards. I made one hundred and ten dollars for going to the grocery store before going to Walgreens. Right. Uh, and so the way I also see this is. I mean, it's, it's being divided up. I make X amount, $40 in gas. Mm -hmm. I'm making a $20 uh, cash back from my credit card. I'm also earning points at my Walgreens purchase. So I've got three different accounts that are all generating income at this point. Yeah. Face it. Uh, and so I'm 40 bucks, that's right out of tank of gas. Well, I'm not paying myself money for gas anymore. 
because I don't have a fuel expense. Mm-hmm. So any wages that I would normally be paying myself for gas, I don't have to do that. I can leave that in the business. One of the things Tyler had brought up to me is, I mean, technically, again, I'm no way an accountant, nor have I ever paid, played one on TV. Technically, you should deduct your gas mileage, correct? No. If you're doing no, you do. I, I do mileage. As far as you can either do mileage or you can do expense. Okay. Okay. And so, so my, and when you deduct mileage, uh, your fuel expense is calculated into that. Okay, okay. So, so then that actually saves you more money. Right, but I'm not an accountant and I'm not giving any <laughs> advice. <laughs> so, uh, we, we both graduated the Donald Trump School of Accounting. Yeah. So, Adrian said, what's the, way, the best way to stack? That, that's kind of it, like, like how Chris had shown, we had given that example where we, we end up saving about 11% off a of Walgreens purchase in store which really would be closer to 15% if it was online. Um, so that was, a, that was an example. It kind of depends on what, what you're doing and where you're shopping. Like Walmart doesn't have a loyalty program really. Right. And, and exactly. As far as what's the best way to stack with which programs, you know, this is, this is stuff I cover in the book where, you know, a lot of stuff is going to change as well. There's going to be new programs that allow you to uh, join in with other programs. You're going to realize that, oh, this program actually ties in with this other program. And it's got plenty, right? So plenty you've got out there. Plenty uh, has a lot of co-offers with other, uh, other brands that they work with. You know, if you're, as an example, if you're purchasing from Nike.com, Okay. A lot of times you can get, say, 10 times the point value for using their cash back portal. It's not a cash back portal, but it's a points earning re- portal uh, that works similar to a cash back. You just bank uh, rewards points for fuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you can look at those and, and compare them to cash back sites. And in some cases, you'll be doing better. In other cases, maybe the cash back site's the place to go. Yeah, it's always nice. You use Ebates a lot, right? I do, yeah. It's always nice. I, like I, just, I just, I think I got like 1500 bucks from them two, three weeks ago. Right. Pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Cody asked about not to derail, but Chase has 10 times the points if you pay through Walmart.com and with Chase Pay. Yeah, th- this is where you just want to figure out which program uh, has the best rewards and, and which one makes the most sense to you. If something like that gives me 6% more than what I'm going to be making trying to use a fuel program, then sure, go go off and chase that one. But if it was, call it 1% difference, I'll probably choose the fuel just because I'm not paying myself for fuel anymore. Mm-hmm. Another thing to watch out for, I, I ran into this um, – Discover will do like you can get 5% cash back at like home improvement stores. Okay. And the way they word it, they word it unclear. It actually was the first $1,500 you spent, which is only $30. Right. So watch, you know, 5% cash back sounds great versus a credit card that's going to give you 1% cash back on everything um, or 2%. Okay. Um, so it was, you know, it can be a little deceptive sometimes with those offers if there's a limit on the Chase Pay offer. There's a credit card rewards company or rewards Facebook group, uh, Amit, I believe is how you pronounce his name, uh, runs it. And it's a, a good group to pay attention to just like good credit cards that have different programs going on. You know, sometimes you get X value for making purchases at your home improvement stores or your uh, electronic stores. Uh, in, the, in the book, I share a story where uh, uh, one of my Shop Your Way clients, Rachel, she made her, her credit card in the Fuel Rewards Network with, uh, they had a promotion with Toys R Us. She ended up earning 400 gallons of gas from that credit card. Wow, Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I'm sure she did it in Q4, right? She did. And she called me. uh, It was New Year's Eve or the day before. She couldn't get into her account, didn't have her card, didn't know how to use the the gas. 
she was in a crisis mode, had 200 gallons of gas expiring the next day. And so I was able to help her out, get that figured out. She couldn't squeeze all the gas in her vehicle. So she ended up calling people, hey, meet me down at the gas station. I got 20 gallons of gas I need to put in your car. Nice. Hey, man. You know, those little things like, you know, when it comes to like being able to help somebody, you know, help a friend of yours or, you know, I, I it, it kind of, I think I've turned into a lot of friends know like, uh, like they'll message me like, oh, I need money or something. But if it's like you can give them some gas or something like that, give it to your mom, give it to your, you know, siblings or whatever, you know, it can really help somebody out too. I agree. When... When I was working, when, so Shell used to be plugged in with uh, Shop Your Way. And so every time I did transactions at Kmart, I would earn $6 in gas for every transaction. Oh. And so I was, uh, I had a bank roll of gas, hundreds of gallons deep, and I couldn't use it all before it was expiring every month. So uh, I, I hit it pretty extreme. I kept my wife's car full, both of my travel cars full, mm -hmm. uh, my in-laws car full. I had about 80 gallons worth of gas cans available at any given time. I went out and I got a pickup truck and put a hundred gallon gas tank in the back of it because I was just, I had so much gas and it, it didn't know what to do with all of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's uh, wow. You know, it, it's, it's fascinating. It really, really is. Um, how do you get a hundred gallon tank in your truck? Like, is it underneath or is it in the back? Well, it's in the bed as far as you see them in, on construction trucks. Uh, they got a gas tank on the back of it. Okay. Yeah. And it was just, I, I hit it full on extreme with this stuff. I mean, what do you do when you have hundreds of gallons worth of gas that's just going to expire? You ever see trailer park boys? I see a little bit of them. There's an episode where they steal a bunch of gas and they start their own gas station in their trailer park. Nice. You're almost to just imagine you doing that. But uh, yeah, wow, it's it's really amazing. And I've done I've done really well with loyalty programs. Um, I have like 1.8 million Walgreens points right now that I need to get spent. Uh, I don't know what that translates to. I think that's like eighteen hundred dollars. I don't know. Um, I have you know Cole's Court. Um, Cole's cash, you know, abound. Uh, I don't do a lot with um, with Sears or Kmart. I probably should, but uh, you know, all that stuff. It really just does add up. And when we're coming into Q4, when you're going to be spending that much money, there's also. I remember last year very distinctly. I think it was Cyber Monday. Just like everything on Ebates was ten percent off or something sure. like that. Yeah, and stack that with all of your other stuff and, and make sure that's the day you do the purchase. Uh, you know, don't do it the day before or the day after. It's, yeah. you know, I'm, the audience here is a lot of FBA. So, uh, you know, we're familiar with stacking and we're familiar with hitting promo, promo codes and uh, all this stuff together. Stack extreme couponing in on top of this, you know? I mean, st stack your, your credit cards in on top of all of this. It's just amazing the, the types of deals that we can structure and we can put together. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited that I had some information to share with everybody as well. I mean, I think that you guys can take this and run with it. Um, Adrian and Cody and Laura and Lisa, do either do any of you guys do any sort of stacking like this now? Yeah, I mean, the thing with stacking is, is like um, – you know, just that one um, transaction, you know, at, at Walgreens is is phenomenal. Um, but I mean, you start stacking like I I do a lot with cold stacking, like that's my big thing. Um, so you know, it's it's fascinating. So Adrian, you ask how far do I plan out, like for gas and promotions and such? You know, it all depends. Is uh, I. I've got stuff marked in my calendar for next year. Uh, I know when uh, seasonal promotions are going to be coming back up. I get a notification. Um, Black Friday, my grocery store has a promotion where if you buy a hundred dollars worth of gift cards, you get a fifteen dollars store gift card on top of it. Well, so they're giving the four percent plus fifteen percent in the gift card for the store. 
and then you're going to stack in the credit card on top of it and then you're going to take that and either do an in-store promotion promotions or ebates point being is a promotion like that where they're going to give you 15 percent cash back or pardon me 15 percent back in a uh, gift card i mean buy ten thousand dollars worth of stuff and you've got i mean you bench right there you're printing money at that point yeah. you're eliminating yeah. your food cost on top of all of this um chris somebody that you and i both are very familiar with um, who sells a lot of Nikes, that should tell you who I'm talking about. Um, him and I, we, I stumbled upon a sale at a certain mall that if you bought, I believe it was a $50 gift card for Nike, you got a $10 card back. So it was 10%, it was 20% off. For and sure. it was, I, I mean, we were almost ready for him to mail me um, um, Amex for me to buy him like $25,000 in gift cards. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it was... You know, that was, I mean, it's huge at that point. And that's, that's so much money that's just for nothing. You know, just your typical sourcing. I, I mentioned in the book that uh, I get people that, that contact me and they say, well, this program isn't available in my area. They shut down this program. This is no longer here, whatever. And to me, it's like, well, quit staring at the problems as far as think, think outside of the box. I mean, you got to know somebody else in a big city that, as an example, has a giant eagle. Hey, here's a couple thousand dollars. Buy me cards. Uh, text me the numbers. Mail me the cards, whatever the case may be. But if I can roll those points into a gas station that I'm, I'm going to use or if I can tie that purchase in with uh, Shell, Fuel Rewards Network, I mean, then I would have the option of getting gas all over the country. Mm -hmm. So what tends to happen is people will sit there and stare at the problems instead of looking for the solutions and being open-minded. Oh, yeah. That's probably one of the biggest things about just being um, an entrepreneur is just, you know, stuff comes your way, whether you're ready for it or not, it's going to become there. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I just posted the link to Chris's group uh, for Gas Holes. That's the name of his book, which made me chuckle. Um, and then you see those gas holes over there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so so Laura says something here. Um, um, I do rewards cards, but looking into credit cards since FBA stopped using them years ago for personal use. This is going to be recorded. I missed the first part. Yes, it will. It's it is being recorded. I uh, would love to hear all of it. Can you post the name? Of the, okay. Um, so, Laura, I will tell you one thing about credit cards. Is not only do credit cards give you cash back, you know, you get 2% cash back when, you know, whatever you end up with, if you go with like a chate or a, um, you know, if you don't have great credit, I have awful credit, um, you know, you can get Capital One. If you can fog a mirror, you can get a Capital One credit card. And it'll give you 1% cash back. You stay with them long enough, I have like a $10,000 limit cash back card that I'm getting 2% cash back on which is, you know, relatively good. You could go Amex if you have better credit. You know, you maybe get a charge card instead of a credit card, whatever. Um, but when you're doing this during Q4, you can use that card, especially if you have a higher limit, like $50,000. As you start to see your Amazon payout climb, uh, okay, if you stopped using credit cards because you didn't want to uh, have interest, okay? I know a lot of people that follow like Dave Ramsey, he tells you never get a credit card. They're the worst thing ever. And they are. But if you see your Amazon payout, it's going to be $15,000. There's no reason you can't run up a $15,000 credit card debt bill for inventory because you know it'll be paid. So that will allow you to be buying inventory on credit before you even get paid by Amazon. So that's effectively daily payouts. And, and pay that just as an example for this right here, Dwayne Malik, he was, he's a Dave Ramsey uh, follower and and he was anti-credit cards but you know what he listened to enough of the facebook community where he's he's in with the rewards credit cards now it's just self-discipline i mean pay those suckers off don't don't hold balances i mean if, if you can do that then then you're good to go yeah well there's also a big difference between hey i'm gonna go and buy five thousand dollars worth of inventory and hey i'm gonna go and buy five thousand dollars worth of chihuahua costumes for myself sure Exactly. Which could also be your inventory, if we really want to be honest. Amazon's a strange place. Yeah, if it's a bad, uh, 
bad purchase. It might just be a personal purchase, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why I sell bras, you know? Hey. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely eye-opening. Was there anything really, uh, Chris, that you, you felt you wanted to talk about? You know, uh, the the book is my first book coming out. I'm I'm excited for it. It's it's got a lot of tips, got a lot of tricks. It helps walk you through. It's not just hey, go to this store and make this type of purchase. I'm trying to show people uh, how to spot deals, how to stack deals, um, changing your personal buying habits. Uh, you know, this isn't all about FBA. I mean, this this program that is available from many, many different companies, if we learn how to work them, then the, the RV community, I mean, you could shave one or three tanks of gas off a month. I mean, mm -hmm. how much is that going to end up being? Uh, if you're aggressive with this, then, I mean, at some point, your your employees might not have to be paying for gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good bonus, yeah. It's it's as far as you really want to take it and, and aggressive as, as you really want to become with it. Um, I, I say, you know, come over to the Facebook group, check it out. Uh, we're we're going to be delving into a lot of the different programs over the next couple months. Uh, if you want to take the slow road, that's free. If you want to figure it out fast, follow the, the link. Uh, yeah. It's $25. I got a, a guarantee on there. If you don't make, if you don't save that amount of money in 12 months, then I'll give you your money back. I, mean, I think that that's a little. I that's, that's, that's fair enough. I, th I think uh, <laughs> if you guys can't do that, then sorry, can't help you. Yeah, and just so you guys know, it's uh, 120 pages. There's some good pictures and diagrams in here. Um, I didn't see too many pictures of you, Chris. I was kind of a little disappointed. I'm usually the one running the camera. Uh huh. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So you know, it's 120 pages. It's big. It's big. You could probably make it like 50 pages if you just, you know, it was regular font. And shockingly, a better love story than Twilight. Nice. I didn't read that. <laughs> a man and his love of cheap gas. So I mean, it's an easy read. Um, I looked. I I went through it pretty quickly. It took me about an hour or two to read it all, and pretty easy. So. Um, yeah, I, I really, I, I really enjoyed what you did with the Sears stuff. I mean, the Sears stuff was just really excellent last year. Yeah. And it's still going. I mean, if anybody wants to, I don't, I'm not very active in my Kmart and Sears group, but if you want to add me as a personal shopper, send me a, a private message on Facebook. I can help you out. I send coupons out and a uh, little additional income that can be uh, saved off for any of your purchases. Just so you guys know, Chris Bond's name on Facebook is Bond Chris Bond. Right? It's still that, right? That's okay. it. Yeah, so, so I typed it out. So if you want to add him on Facebook, um, Bond Chris Bond. So, yeah, man, that, that's awesome. And, uh, and you really did open my eyes to the rewards programs, which kind of led me into, like, my uh my doing so well with or doing so much with Kohl's you kind of pushed me in that direction with Kmart uh there's not a lot of Kmart in my area so that kind of didn't work too well for me but Kohl's did um so that I really want to thank you for that sure I appreciate it yeah you can go down to the store and get yourself some Kohl's gift cards <laughs> yeah yeah man <laughs> so did anybody before we jump off here did anybody have any questions we uh kind of knock this out unless there was anything else you wanted to talk about chris yeah i mean i'm i'm open if anybody has questions about anything i mean ask me anything it could be travel taj it could be fba it could be oa ra what do you pack with you when you're doing travel taj what like you bring uh, your box of stuff what would you say the most essential thing to bring for travel taj that isn't like anything like the thing you bring that like is your comfort my computer your computer yeah, and I've left without it before. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah a Dymo printer. Um, I'm pretty basic when I when I hit the road. Uh, labels, poly bags, uh, Goo Gone. Uh, I carry Scotty Peeler scissors, scale, uh, extra Dymo labels. 
um, that's that's pretty much it. I keep it really, really simple. Um, I'll usually carry three or four uh, rolls of tape because uh, you never know when you're going to hit the mother load and just rip through a bunch of tape. Uh, so I've learned to not just have one or two tape guns, but also carry multiple extra rolls. Um, you know, this this last round when I went out to Oregon, in my trailer I've got a couple uh, marine batteries in it. Mm -hmm. And so I can, I, I'll just pull up into a parking lot and hook up a power inverter and start printing labels off and packing boxes. Uh, and I had never tried this with my uh, power inverter before, but I was able to hook up my heat gun to it and, and start stripping yeah. labels off right in parking lots. Uh, you know they actually make uh, propane heat guns. Right on. I didn't know that. Yeah, I used to have. They also make propane soldering irons. I used to use them when I did battle bot competitions because you have to use them sometimes to shrink wrap parts together. Right. Nice. Yeah, but um, so uh, <laughs> Dymo Four X. Do you game at all, Chris? Uh, yeah, I, I do magic. Uh, used to role play a little bit more uh, than I do nowadays. Uh, do you play video games at all, like on the computer or anything? I do a little bit of Xbox. Yeah, I play Star Wars on Xbox, not much else. Yeah, I, I you know, honestly, I do. Um, that's kind of the thing that I bring with me. Like, you know, if I get bored, I can hop on and play some Counter Strike or you know something like that with my uh, with my nerdy friends. Yeah, uh, I bring magic cards with me in different places. I stop around the country. Uh, my friends play magic, and so yeah, we just break cards out and have a game of cards for the evening. That's pretty awesome. I've also really been lately into like playing blackjack too. So I mean, that's like a good. Uh, you yeah, know. I saw you uh, won a couple bucks. I did. I did. Um, so Adrian asked. I think this is a good question. A great question, actually. Um, what? Uh, how long did it take for everything to come together for you? And how, actually, let's ask another question. Has everything come together for yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to say I, I turned forty-four yesterday, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's still coming together. Uh, I still become aware of other programs, uh, and I'm able to modify my buying habits even more. Uh, and it's yeah, I mean it's still coming together. I've I've been on this gas rewards program. I dialed it in three years ago, uh, and so for the last three years, I've been raging it. Um, and, and yeah, it, it changes. Uh, I find new stuff to stack in with it. Uh, storage closed down, whatever. It's, it's always getting dialed in every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Cody says to get an EMT bag. It's perfect for processing supplies. That sounds like it would be good or like a little tackle box or something. Yeah, I do uh, a milk box, a uh, nice square box. It's treated me good. I used to use them for uh, book sales. I'd uh, go grab milk boxes from the grocery store, and they're nice, heavy-duty boxes, uh, nice and square as well, handles on them. And so I've just modified to using that for my to-go box, and it makes it real quick and easy. I carry a, a laser printer with me. I need. I got a, uh, a Zebra last month, but I can't get it to print my shipping label where I feel it's legible. Um, so I haven't uh, gone over to using the zebra for that. Uh, I need, I just need to get a Dymo uh, 4XL. And you know you can print shipping labels with a Dymo 450, right? I mean, I have a 450 turbo. Um, I haven't used it for shipping or for, yeah, for doing shipping labels yet. Yeah, you can use that. You buy the two and five sixteenth label by four, works okay. great. Right on. Yeah, send me a link for that in Facebook later. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was looking around to see if I had any sitting in my office, but um, yeah, every now and then UPS yells at me because our labels don't look like everyone else's. They're just these, I mean, they're little, like, don't get me wrong, but they scan perfectly. Sure. They're the smallest size they authorize, so whatever. Yeah, I've, one of my tips that I I use on the laser printer that I see everybody else's packages on their uh, posts on Facebook, they've got two stickers. They use a full sheet of uh, stickers in order to print their labels. 
and you can just go in and and modify your print to do two labels per sheet and it condenses your entire label onto one label instead of oh. having two labels so we got to grab a shipping label yeah half the printing uh half the toner half the labels chris this is this is how big my shipping labels are sure that big yep yep Palm, palm of my hand, okay, and I have a spare spool, so it just takes a second to pop the uh, pop the spool out real fast, and uh, works works wonderfully. Yeah, it seems like that's my next step. Then is just get those labels because I've got a bunch of Dymos floating around. I've been using Dymos for over a decade. Okay. So um, Adrian said next you'll be visiting. Uh, what's that? Larry Correa? Yeah, what's that? Don't know. Uh, I've never played Magic. Well, I played Magic the Gathering one time and I lost. So, I did play Dungeons and Dragons one time. I ran a gaming store for five years, a bookstore that we it had D and D supplies. And when the lady had passed away, I went in and uh, revived it and turned it into. Uh, a store where we gamed five, six nights a week. It was pretty fun. It's really awesome. I, I, I really love tabletop gaming. Um, one of my friends, uh, Will, an old boss of mine, uh, actually, you know what? You and I should play. This would be really intense. I don't know that we could play with Adam Black because I think that Adam Black would get way too intense at this. Okay, if you guys have never met Adam Black, he's a great guy. But So have you ever heard of the game Diplomacy? Sure. you <laughs> Okay, so we should play with Adam. I think that that would be great. I think that that would be absolutely great. We should let Tyler and Adam play together, though. They'd ally together too quickly. If, if you've never played it, um, it's basically like um, a board game of World War I Europe, okay? And then what happens is, is you make these moves, but what you do is you write down your moves. So you negotiate. So, like, Let's say me and Chris are on it. It's all it's everybody for themselves. But I could say to Chris, hey, Chris, I'm going to attack. Will you reinforce me? So now I know what Chris is going to do. And we do this and we write it down and we give it to the game master. And then he makes the moves. Well, the thing is, is if Chris knows that I'm going to attack, he knows that I'm vulnerable. So he could come in and, you know, take my territory or something like that. It's really a lot of fun. I used to play it at an old job of mine. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, bring it next uh, next conference. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think that it would result in possibly a fist fight. Sweet. Yeah, yeah uh, if you guys aren't doing conferences, I would, uh, as far as something else to talk about, go to a conference. Uh, get out and meet the community. It's one of the best things that we can do with each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's so much money to be made, so much to be learned. Um, it's amazing. Uh, has anybody here besides I've met Chris several times at conferences? Um, my mom's watching for some reason. Um, hi, mom. Um, is there anybody here that's been to a conference? I don't think Cody's been to a conference. I was trying to get him to get to ASD. Okay, yeah, I think I was trying to get Cody to get out to ASD. Adrian, you've been to uh, ASD. That's awesome. I loved ASD. Did you? You didn't go to ASD last time. It was kind of not that good. They um, they really um, cut it back a lot. Like it's usually a little bit smaller in the summer, but um, it was really tiny. It was really tiny, but I landed some good deals. That's what it's about. Yeah. Did you um? You were there. Yeah, you were there last time. What's the next conference you're going to, Chris? Be going to Chicago. That's in Ecom Chicago. Is about the third week of October. Uh, good conference. It's general e-tail. It's eBay, Amazon. You got private label that's discussed. Uh, wholesale, uh, retail ARB. You got, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, overall, it's a general e-tail conference. It's, it's a really good one to go to. There's typically a couple hundred people that go to it. Okay. Do you, uh, that, that sounds really cool. Um, 
uh, Adrian says she's going to go to Via. Via, yeah, that's a good one. I've heard good things about. Uh, if you're up in New England area, well, New York area, um, a really good one that I've heard really good things about. I've yet to go to it is Magic. It's more of a fashion show. Um, I, I know it's it's shocking, but I'm actually very fashionable. Um, <laughs> me and Chris, we're we're the trendsetters, aren't we? That's it. Um, but uh, but that's good if you're in clothing because it's it's magic. I think it's they have a whole section called off price, um, and most of the um, off price and liquidation clothing in the country is located in New York City or Los Angeles. So um, I believe magic is either in Vegas out when it's out west, it's in Vegas or L.A., and then it's also in New York City at the Javits Center. Really excellent uh, conference. I, again, I've never been to it, but I know people have gone. So yeah, just getting out in general, I mean, one is uh, a lot of times when we're just sitting, sitting in our communities, I mean, it took a while for me to get out and meet other people. I was mm -hmm. sitting behind my keyboard for years and uh, lurking in chat rooms. But when I started getting out to conferences uh, and meeting people, I'll tell you what, that's when a lot of other types of deals started being presented to me. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, I mean, I've, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the FBA community on Facebook. Um, I, I talk with a lot of you guys uh, in private messages. People will ask me questions and such. Uh, it's all about us helping each other. You know, it is. It's it is. what it comes down to. It's we don't go to conferences to see, you know, what all I can learn from everybody else and not give back. It's let's go out and give some stuff and other stuff just happens and people, other people give back. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and, you know, I just spent that, uh, week together with Tyler, um, you know, and when Tyler and I go shopping, you know, I like to fancy myself very competent at shopping and Tyler's also very competent, but, um, we still learn from each other. There's things, you know, Tyler's so good with video games. It, he's masterful with it. But then, you know, I was looking at some batteries and stuff, and I found some stuff that Tyler wasn't really considering for purchase that turned out to be really awesome inventory. It was like 300% ROI battery packs. So it was, uh, you know, definitely um, it's good when you can work together. And I, I think that there is something also to, you know, two people going shopping together. I've gone shopping together, not only, you know, with, like, friends, like I've gone shopping with, well, I was going to go shopping with, uh, you know, John Sison, right? What? Yeah, I ended up just eating pancakes with him. But we were going to go shopping, you know. Hey! Uh, <laughs> I mean, hey. This is good, yeah. But um, there was a guy, a gentleman, Ben Johnson, I went shopping with out of Chicago. Um, obviously, I've gone shopping with Tyler. Uh, do you know Wendy uh, and Samantha uh, Balthus, I think their last name is? They're up in New England. They're real tight with Chris Green. I've gone shopping with, uh, with them. Uh, it's Bob Steele. Oh man, shopping with Bob Steele is intense. <laughs> but they have Bob and Rhonda, they're they're really intense. They're good. But uh um we've you know, going shopping with those people, I've learned so much and then been able to pass on information to people. Um and, and I think that that's probably one of the best ways to just learn. I agree. Uh the the trip I took out to Oregon and back, I went out with another FBA seller that I, I turned on to Amazon. Yeah. And he's He's been at it for a couple of years, and so we're diving into stores, and I'm getting to see his buying patterns, which are completely different than mine. Mm -hmm. Another thing about it is he's gated in so much stuff. Like, he can't sell popular toys. I'm just like, oh, my God, you know? And so I'm able to, to walk into these stores, and it was neat seeing all the stuff that he just couldn't sell. Mm -hmm. And so he's – he's not my competition on it along with a whole bunch of other new sellers that are just getting into this. Yeah. I just worked out a deal with Tyler, um, on, I got a bunch of R2D or, uh, BB eight toys that I can't sell. And, uh, I picked them up. They were a hundred percent ROI and, uh, I'm going to be shipping them in for him in the next couple of days. Sure. And that's one of the relationships that you form from getting face to face with other sellers is, yep. I mean, right there, an opportunity like that, you could find an end cap full of those and it could be a 500 or or $1,000 deal that you could make money on. But yeah, if you're gated on that, 
typically you just walk by. But if you've met people face to face and you know there's somebody out there that you trust and mm -hmm. and the opportunity is available, hey, let's hook up together and do this deal and both make some money. Yeah, and also Tyler and I have on several occasions gone you know, we had a deal, I believe it was $10,000. We didn't have the $10,000 each, but we split up this deal and uh, ended up making really good money on it. You know, $5,000 $5, buy-in wasn't too oppressive. You know, so it worked pretty well. So, well, Chris, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? I mean, if, I think we covered most everything. I mean, plenty of... Uh... Plenty of opportunity out there for us. Really get up and, and put one foot in front of the next. Go do it. Yeah, yeah. Just get out there and shop, man. That's what it comes down to sometimes. <laughs> so, well, guys, listen. Um, I'm going to drop the links here for Chris's stuff again. Um, it's uh, called Gas Holes. Um, it's on Gumroad. Okay, so he's uh, that's the link there for it. And then um, his Facebook... It's just called Gas Holes Fuel Savings. So it's uh, facebook.com backslash gas holes fuel savings. And as always, Chris, it was so, so great to talk to you. Uh, I can't wait to see you again. I don't know when that's going to be, but hopefully it's soon. It's definitely going to be ASD in spring at the latest, but hopefully before then. You know, it's only like an 18-hour drive. I could just drive out there. To my place, sure. Can you get some hot dogs grilling for me? I'm sure I could. About 17 and a half hours. I'll be ready. <laughs> well, man, it's great talking to you. You have a great night, and I really hope this book goes well for you. Um, I, I looked over it. It was definitely excellent. I think that uh, although you guarantee it in uh, 12 months, I think, honestly, if you follow what's in this, you'll, you'll get it in a week or two if you're, uh, if you're spending uh, some good money, uh, maybe a month at the latest. So. Yeah, I love seeing the feedback in the group right now. There's a number of members that are posting that they they paid uh, less than a penny a gallon was one posted the other day. Uh, somebody else paid uh, 55 cents a gallon. I mean, this stuff works. It's just a matter of you guys getting up and figuring it out and taking action. Yeah. Well, man, it was great talking to you. You have a wonderful night. I don't appreciate it. Talk to you later.